So we're going to start um, with some two-axis facing and pocketing. And we're going to face the top of the body, even though the stock is the, is the correct height. We're just going to run a face mill across just to make sure it, it cuts off any uh, any uh, ambiguities in the surface finish of the stock itself. So we're going to go to two axis. And again, as we go through this, if you've got any questions, just type them in the questions bar and uh, we'll stop and get them answered. So we're going to go to the two and one half axis menu. And again, as Joe mentioned, we're programming this in the standard configuration, even though you see the professional, all these other options, we're only going to be using uh, the options that are available uh, in the standard uh, configuration. So pretty much all of the uh, two axis options are in uh, the standard except for a few. We're going to go ahead and do the facing. And we have a number of curves already defined uh, on this part. You see there's uh, all our curves that we have created. So for the two axis, we're going to be using curves to define the control geometry. So for the facing, we're going to go ahead and pick the select curve edge regions. And we're going to use this curve right here. for the perimeter. So this is the perimeter of the face that we're going to use, and that's the only curve that we need. So there's our control geometry region. And for the tool, we're going to use our two-inch diameter face mill. We're not really going to talk about speed, feeds and speeds or clearance. We're just going to leave all these set to the default parameters. Uh, for roughing, on this facing, we're not really concerned with tolerance or stock because the center of the tool is going to go to the boundary. It's going to base it off uh, uh, correctly. All we really need to pay attention to really uh, is our cut pattern. We're going to do an offset pattern, so it's going to be going around the perimeter as it cuts. Um, this is really the most important level in facing. Where are you going to face at? So we're going to be facing uh, at the bottom of our geometry. So the geometry we selected is going to be at the bottom of the cut. Because it's at the bottom, we don't need any depth parameters. They're all going to be set to zero. So it's just going to uh, machine at the bottom or at the control geometry. Uh, we selected just one level. Okay. And for the facing entry and exit, um, we can use some uh, lines and arcs since we're going to be coming in. Um, actually, we're going to be, we're not facing off the entire block, so let's go ahead and use a ramp motion because we're going to be cut, uh, just machining a subsection inside uh, the stock area. So we'll do a ramp entry, and we'll go ahead and do uh, just a retract uh, straight up uh, at the end of the cut. And doing for the along path, you can set the angle and the height. We're not going to mess with those, just use the defaults. And for the advanced cut uh, parameters, we have some cur some arcs in here. We don't really need to do arc fitting. We'll just leave it set to, to the uh, default parameters and generate it. Okay, so here's our facing uh, toolpath. And let's go ahead and start our simulation. Just check our simulation preferences. So we're going to use the polygonal model. We're going to use a simulation accuracy set to fine. Uh, for machining, we're going to have the part sampling resolution set to fine. Our default tolerance is one thousandths. And let's look at what else we got. Let's change some colors for the stock model so we can see it a little bit better. Okay, and that's pretty much all we're going to use there. Uh, let's just do one cursory look. Stock, cutting tools, and Even speeds, we're not going to be messing with that. Uh, we don't need anything there. A tool path, we're going to set the display uh, to two, which makes them stand out a little bit better so you can see them. Uh, simulation, we went over that. User interface, we don't need to change anything on the rest of it. We'll just pick OK. So now we'll just go ahead and simulate this. <clears throat> And you'll see that we have um, the top of the guitar body uh, faced off. 